Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I'm your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 133 of our trek and we are remaining in camp this week as we dig for the nuggets of wisdom contained within the book of Proverbs. As the prospectors of old would pan for gold in the creeks and rivers, let us wash away the dirt from the many modern media outlets that want to pollute our minds each day and find the pure gold that is located in the streams of Proverbs. Yesterday we began in chapter 3 and today we will continue to explore the same chapter as we pan for additional nuggets of wisdom. Once we do complete the entire book of Proverbs, we will make the entire commentary available as an ebook. Although on a weekly basis, we are going to make many treks between our times at camp. If you have any of your own observation, comments, or questions as we explore these nuggets of wisdom, please share them on our comment section of the Daily Journal page at wisdom trekcom We are recording our podcast from our studios at Home 2 in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we are busily completing the work that needs to be done and the podcast that we are finishing up that will air while we are on our short trip to Phoenix. Life seems to always be full, rich, and exciting. While we have this opportunity, we must continue on. As the old saying goes, we have to make hay while the sun shines. As we are enjoying this time sitting around a campfire, let us share more wisdom nuggets from Solomon and see how they apply to our trek of life. For me, campfires have always been a time of reflection and relaxing. We need to cherish every moment of life to learn, to grow, to create a legacy of wisdom, and to seek out discernment and insight at every opportunity that we have. As I mentioned yesterday, the title for chapter 3 is Trusting in the Lord, and we want to focus today on the wrong types of wisdom and intelligence. So let's look at verse number 7. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. There is a wrong type of wisdom. Verse 7 mentions your own wisdom. There are also a wrong type of understanding which we looked at yesterday in verse number 5 that mentions your own understanding. There is a difference between our own wisdom and God's wisdom. Also, there is a difference between our thoughts and God's thoughts. God is wiser than we are. God is more intelligent than any person. Isaiah 55 verses 8-9, through 9, the Lord tells us this, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you can imagine. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. With this, we must not be proud. All true wisdom comes from God. Our own ideas may be good, but they are never better than God's wisdom. God teaches His wisdom to us. It is God's gift for us. Do not confuse your own ideas with God's wisdom. Let's continue on in verse 8. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Sometimes unwise choices will cause us illness. For example, if we drink excessive alcohol or eat the wrong foods or too much food, it can make us ill. But God's wisdom does not hurt us. God is kind to us and helps us. He cares about our body. He also cares about our spirits. And we can take comfort in that there will be nobody ill in heaven. Revelation 21.4 says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All of these things are gone forever. So we have to come to the understanding that the wisdom that we need is God's wisdom. Let's continue on with verses 9 and 10 of chapter 3 as Solomon teaches us about the priorities with money when he writes, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. In Malachi chapter 3 verses 6 through 12, Malachi accuses the people. He says that they have stolen from God This is because they have not given their gifts to God's work. The truth is that all of our possessions belong to God. He made the world, so He made everything that we have. Our own lives belong to Him, and as Christians we should be generous. We should give to God's work, which includes giving to those which includes giving to those that are poor and less fortunate than us. People may say, If I give I won't have enough for myself. And while we should be sensible in our spending, we must also trust in God, for God says in Psalms chapter 50 verses 9 and 10, But I do not need your bulls from your barns or your goats from your pens, for all the animals in the forest are mine, and I own the cattle on a thousand hills. If we give our money to God's work, then God will provide for us. Jesus put it this way in Luke chapter 6 verse 38, Give and you will receive. Your gift will be returned to you in full. Pressed down, shaken together to make room for more. 
running over, and poured into your lap. The amount that you give will determine the amount that you get back. This certainly sounds like a great return and investment to me. And we have to realize that God doesn't need our wealth. However, He chooses to work with us, and we should be glad to give to God's work. In 2 Corinthians verse 9-7 says this, You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. As we give to other people, God gives good things to us. Malachi 3.10 puts it this way, Bring all of your tithes into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of the heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out the blessing so great that you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. So that's our lesson on finances in this passage. Now on to discipline in verses 11 and 12. My child, do not reject the Lord's discipline, and don't be upset when he corrects you. For the Lord corrects those he loves, just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. Now many people do not want to learn or behave well. They want to choose how they will live their own lives. But God is our father, and as a father teaches his son, sometimes the father must correct a son. In the same way, God corrects us. God does not correct us because He is angry at us. God corrects us because He loves us. And as a human father, we should not punish our child because we are angry with them. Rather, as a father, we should correct a child because the father loves his child. If God does correct us, we should actually be glad. His correction teaches us to do the right things. His correction will save us from trouble. God does not forget about us. He watches over us. He sees our errors. And in love, he corrects us. And he might correct us by some word that we read in the Bible. He might use the advice of other people, such as a minister or a friend. And in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 and 6 tells us, And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline, and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. Sometimes correction includes learning. Hebrews 12.11 says, No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful. But afterwards, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. Today on our trek of Proverbs, we learn not to be impressed by our own wisdom, but with God's wisdom. We also learn the law of giving and receiving from what is entrusted to us by God as we are to become wise managers of it. And lastly, we understand now that each of us needs discipline at times because it helps us to grow and mature. Think about these three points for today and then join us tomorrow as we continue on in Proverbs chapter 3 and learn about the wrong types of wisdom and intelligence on another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. That will finish our podcast for today. Remember to listen to your daily dose of wisdom at wisdom-trek.com Or you can subscribe at iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spreaker, or YouTube. And by doing so, the episodes will be downloaded to you automatically. And I would like to ask you to please share Wisdom Trek with your family and friends, either through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person so that they can come along with us each day also. The journal for today's trek can be found at wisdom-trek.com. And thank you for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, and as always, most importantly, your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. And as we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly or fully, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.